All right, brush monkeys, we're back in this week. Last week we we're weathering the uh, 3D printed buildings that we've been working on for the last couple of weeks. And uh, we got a lot of the weathering done last week when we we're talking about weathering paints, uh, nylic oxide, typhus corrosion, rise of rust, that kind of thing. This week we we're talking about weathering powders and other weathering, weathering mediums. Um, we've got some weathering powder set here. We got some weathering pencils. We've got this nifty little thing that I got from um, uh, an asset drop box called an oil brusher. It says dark mud, but you can basically, it's kind of, it's almost an eyeliner pencil kind of thing. But you uh, draw that out, you can see that little fine tip brush on there. And you can use it to do streaks of grime and things like that. And we'll show you that on the, the bullet holes here. Um, there's also powders from companies like Secret Weapon, MIG. There's uh, these Tamiya Weathering Master sets from um, Tamiya models. These things are fantastic. I love these. We'll get into these in a little bit. And of course, the old standby Agrax Earth Shade, which is great for washing um, gunk onto things. We're also going to talk a little bit about some of the tools used. Uh, I've got an X-Acto knife, a couple of brushes, some swabs here. So we'll get into all that. <clears throat> First and foremost, um, we're going to talk about weathering powders. Now, there's a lot of different weathering powder brands on the market and a lot of different kinds of weathering powders you can get. Um, this is a really good set for beginners. These are kind of small containers, little jars here. Um, but this is uh, called Doc O'Brien's weathering powder set and it's available from Micromark. This is a great little starter set. It comes in a lot of different colors green, yellow, desert sand, dirty brown, muddy red, rusty red, rusty brown, mildew green. Look at that. That's fantastic. Um, gritty black, all that. Got a great, great number of uh, just great beginner set for applying uh, weathering powders. Now the thing about <laughs> weathering stuff is if you're like me and you and you like doing weathering on stuff and like making it look old and beat up and grimy then you tend to start collecting stuff and uh, in the words of Hunter Thompson uh, once you get locked into a serious collection the tendency is to take it as far as you can so I've got another whole thing of weathering supplies some uh, red brick powder from secret weapon um, some light rust powder from MIG uh, this stuff is a uh, washable dust which means you can wash it over something like a, a tarp or something like that and then wipe away the excess off the highlights and it'll leave dust in the in the low lights um, this is another little thing from the Doc O'Brien set it just wouldn't fit in that other drawer pigment binder uh, yeah well that says pigment color but it's another thing a binder all of this stuff I wasn't going to use on these models so I just left them in the drawer So, what we're going to focus on today is the, the Tamiya Weathering Master sets, and these are basically, it's sort of eyeshadow for models. And you can get these in most hobby stores. They come with a little applicator, but the applicator pretty, pretty quickly gets gunked up and thrown out. But you can get these little applicators at pretty much any CVS or Walgreens in the makeup department. You can get them double-ended like this, or just one end like this one. And they're eyeshadow applicators, is all they are. Since the stuff works like eyeshadow, just use it like eyeshadow. And I'll show you real quick how it works here, like the soot. Um, I'm going to do soot over the vents on both of these models. So we're going to do... Uh, get in there. Just rub that on there. And then over the external vent here, we'll just... Like that, and it gets nice and sooty. So yeah, and it's a very subtle uh, effect, but it's effective. It works, and you can enhance this effect a little bit with the soot powder, which we we will also do. Um, I like to use this stuff to kind of sketch out what I'm trying to do with the color, like right here, just doing the vent. Okay. Boom, now I got the vents black. 
we'll take a uh, little bit of it and put it on the put it around the bullet holes here and again it's just a sketch so if it doesn't show up real well it's not a big deal poke that little piece of sand out of there It's been driving me nuts for two videos now. There we go. All right, now, a little bit around that hole. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes that comes off. That's okay. They're disposable, and I it achieved what I wanted to achieve. So that's all that's involved in that. Um, and there's a bunch of different kinds. There's a uh, rust mud light sand sand and they're all done kind of pretty much the same way i'm going to do a little bit of this mud and uh now we're also going to be using the um mig weathering powders but like i said this is useful for sketching out what you want to do and just just want to create kind of a baseline for the, the mig powders along the bottom of the building here and it just creates kind of a light, dusty effect on there. Like I said, we'll go back over with the MIG powders and do that a little heavier. Make it a little muddier. And it's going to look really good. But it's really fairly quick and easy to do this. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. These handles are really not made for this. <laughs> I keep knocking these buildings over literally every video. Because they're really not made for terrain. And that can be one of the bigger problems with working with terrain is finding a way to hang on to it while you're working. Otherwise, you're just going to end up getting fingerprints on it or mucking it up somehow. So there you go. Got a nice little baseline dirt around there. I'm going to go ahead and shut this off and do this with the other building. And then we'll come back and take a look at the powders here and the um, streaking agents. And possibly take a look at the... Let's go ahead and take a look at the pencils here before we go real quick. Um, the two main ones I'm going to use here are this one that says dust and rain marks. This one's going to come in later. Um, basically what's what's gonna go what's gonna happen here is all these windows that I've got on here look fantastic now but they're way too clean since all the rest of the building is beat up and dirty and everything like this so after I finish what we're doing and I seal the whole paint job and everything with the army painter and a sign then I'm gonna go back over with some gloss paint do the lenses here the buttons and all the windows with the gloss paint and that'll make it look look glassy like there's glass over the windows then I'm gonna take this pencil and do some streaks on the glass so it looks like you know windows aren't gonna be spotlessly clean on a building this filthy um, so that'll help grime that up just a little bit without really ruining the effect of the OSL this other one is called dark aluminum and I kind of tested this out last night because I've never actually used these. <laughs> but it works really well. I went through and did the edges, the bottom edge of the vents here, thinking, you know, if the rain's coming down, it's going to rust on the top edge of all those vents. The bottom edge will still have that kind of bare metal look to it. So I went ahead and did the bottom edge of all those. And that's really all it is, just drawing it in like a pencil on, on all the bottom edges. And you can see how subtle an effect that is but it's really effective. It looks really good. I'll probably do this one too once I'm done with the soot. But I did that on both of them. I also went over the antenna here and did some on the antenna and the radio array here, the cable, just to give it a little more metallic look and it looks really, I think it looks really fantastic. So. Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and pause here and do the mud on the other building, and then we'll come back and take a look at the um, 
the oil brusher here and the weathering powders. All right, so I will see you soon. Bye. All right, I'm back, and uh, unfortunately, I ran into a little bit of a technical glitch. Turns out that what was supposed to be this segment in the video didn't actually record. And then I recorded the segment after this and uh, completed some steps after that. So now I've got to go back and redo the steps that I missed. Fortunately, it wasn't much. It was just talking about this little gadget. This is an ELF brush. If it'll focus. ELF stands for eyes, lips, face. And it's just a makeup contour brush that you could buy at any CVS pharmacy. Um, Walgreens pharmacy. Walgreens uh, any place in the makeup department. It's kind of similar to this brush that you'll see in the next segment But it's uh, it's cheap. It's like two three bucks for this little thing and it's great for putting uh, Soot on I, as you can see I did the soot on this on the vents with this brush and then Like I said I lost the footage. So so we're gonna put some soot around these bullet holes To uh, show you how this thing works and really all you do is just, this is the um, secret weapon uh, soot exhaust black uh, weathering powder. You just put a little bit on your brush there. And then you're going to kind of stipple it around each of the holes. Like that. And stipple it around that hole. There we go. And there you go. Now you got some nice burn marks on there in addition to the to the weathering. And there you go. And that's really all it is. And this can be cleaned the same as any regular dry brush. If you're if you've ever used the uh, Army Painter's got some new uh, Master Series dry brushes that are essentially the same thing. They're just I think the smallest one is this, and then they they go up from there. Pretty big brushes, but that's really all it is. Just ELF brush, eyes, lips, face, contour brush. Great for doing large dry brushing like this. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and pause here, and then we'll uh, get on to the next part of the program. See you soon. Bye. It's got the same kind of round shape as the uh, Elf brush. It's just kind of uh, softer. It feels softer. It's got a little longer bristles. Not sure why that shut off. Um, but you use it the same way. You just kind of dip it into your weathering powder there. And then I think it's determined to fall over. And then just kind of stipple it onto the building like that. blow off the excess you can also go go back through and kind of brush off the excess if you want but you can see on there how first of all a lot a lot more gets on there but you can also see how you've got the again like with the soot you've got the lighter stuff that you did with the Tamiya set and then you've got the heavier mud that's going on now and you get kind of an irregular pattern stippling it on there like that so you get this kind of up and down motion there. Doing it this way I find it's helpful because you not only get that realistic sort of two-stage old mud new mud look and the uh, irregular shape but it also kind of sketches out where the Tamiya is useful for sketching out where you want the mud to be. And it's pretty easy to wipe off with a paper towel if you decide you don't want it on there. But there you go. That's it's all muddied up. And again, you can just clean the brush same as always. Just got it all nice and dry. If you want to go back through and clean some off, you can. There you go. See? Comes right off. Got a little too much off, so I'm going to put some more back on there. There we go. You can also kind of wet it down and do some wet mud like that. 
And when that dries, that'll look like the same as the rest of it. There we go. So there you go. It's going to dry a little bit darker than the rest of it, and it's going to look pretty good. Yeah. Now, the thing about this is, when you're doing this, you want to do it someplace where you, you've got a fairly good working, you got your dedicated working space, or you've got some kind of surface put down, because this stuff is messy as all hell. It is ridiculous. Um, as you can see, I've got dust all over literally everything all over myself um, but yeah it's it's not that big a deal just go ahead and, and keep working on that so um, I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna shut this off I'm gonna do the other building and then I'm gonna cut out the decals that I want to use and I'll show you how to put on the decals all right and we'll come back and do that see you soon bye all right we're back and uh, as you can see I've put the decals on the buildings you know I got that weird obsession with the number seven so I've got building seven building 14 and then I went ahead and put these um, uh, graffiti decals around there and they're looking pretty good but they also kind of stand out because they're way too clean for these buildings so what we're gonna do here is uh, I'm gonna take a little bit of Agrax Earthshade Thin down and just wash it over the wash it over just the decals by themselves. Now, hopefully, we're not going to use all, so much of it that it uh, that it moves the decals. But this should should end up looking pretty nice when I'm done here. So, bear with me just a second here. I'm basically doing a one-to-one -one mix of uh, Agrox Earthshade and Lamian Medium here. And then we're just going to brush it, mix it together, and brush it over the decals. And ideally, that should bring them to the same level of kind of dirty that the rest of the building is here. Just like that. And if this doesn't, we'll take we'll take some uh, take some weathering powder to it too. Dirt that up a little bit. That's really going to be important with this one because this orange is a nice color to set off on the blue, but it's also a neon orange. It doesn't need to be that bright. So we're just going to paint these. I do the whole area so it doesn't look like it was just dirtied up over the there we go now the added advantage to this is Lamian medium is a flat medium so um, decals like this one where you can see the edges of it was a little glossy this will also take that gloss off of there too and allow it to lay flat And I just picked these decals basically at random, depending on uh, where I thought they would fit on the, the thing. I have no idea who Edwin Parsi is. These are actually decals from a Judge Dredd game that were included free with another um, miniature painting, or miniature painting, miniature wargaming magazine. So the names of the gangs, the names of the slogans, what have you. May all kind of have to do more with that than Warhammer 40k. But I think that's going to work. Alright, so that's all of those. Shade wash. And we're going to let that dry. And then we'll come back and see how that blended in. And if it didn't, we'll take a little bit of the MIG powder here 
and the our uh, smooshing brush and uh, smoosh some dirt on there. In the meantime, uh, I'm going to use this uh, oil brusher here. It's a MIG oil brusher. It says dark mud. It's going to give that a little shake, and we're going to use that on the bullet holes. Okay. And like I said, this is kind of a kind of an eyeliner pencil sort of thing. It's got this little brush here, and it's basically just for doing stuff like along the bottom edge of the hole, and then. A little streak of grime like that. And let's just do a little line the bottom of each one of these yeah. now if that seems like it's a bit too much you can always take a sponge kind of Damp it down on that. There we go. That blends it in a little better. Just like that. So now you got nice little grime streaks coming down from there. Put another layer over these decals here. all of them that one seems to have blended in the best oddly enough all right so now that that's all that's done but that's really all that is it's just it's called oil brusher it's got a little built-in brush it's oil paint oil paint and brush system and it's used for doing little streaky grime stuff like that so it's pretty nice for that um anyway like i said i'm gonna go ahead and let those dry and then uh We'll come back and see how they look, and if they don't look right, we'll put some powder on them. If they do look right, then we'll put some sealant on them, because we're just about done. Alright, see you soon. Bye. Alright, brush monkeys, so we're back, and as you can see, the looks like the uh, decals and graffiti got thinned down, and you can see it doesn't leave that nice, that little uh, shiny outline of the decals anymore. Toned them down really nicely. Made them look like they're all part of the building. I'm just going around spot checking them now. I ran into a little thing like right here where I had I had a piece of the um, salt still stuck on the thing, so I chipped it off and it chipped off the end of the end of the writing too. So that actually kind of came out looking a little extra realistic right there. I got a little graffiti there and there. That's looking really good. Yeah, everything seems toned down and part of the, uh, you can see on the door here especially, it's kind of conformed to the lines on the door. So it all looks like it's part of the building. It's all cohesive now. So now what we're gonna do, just to keep everything in place, we're gonna go over the whole thing with Army Painter Anti-Shine and then, like I said, we're going to gloss coat the windows. And then, last but not least, we'll go over the windows with this uh, Dust and Rain Marks pencil from AK Interactive. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and pause here and go matte, matte seal those. And then we'll come back and see how they look. All right. See you soon. Bye. All right. We're back. And as you can see, the building is all matte sealed. The windows are gloss coated. I don't know if you can see that or not, but they are glossy. Um, just want to double check that. They're not looking as glossy as I thought they would. Alright, so those are all glossy. Uh, the gloss coat is going to take a little while to dry. So I'm going to take a break and let that happen. And then we'll come back and do the streaks on the windows with the uh, 
dust and rain marks pencil from AK Interactive. And that'll be the last bit of weathering we do. That's going to wrap up the weathering. And these buildings will finally be done. And uh, we'll see how they look. All right. See you soon. Bye. All right, brush monkeys. We're going to wrap this up here. Um, we're doing rain streaking on the windows with this dust and rain marks pencil. And all it's going to involve, really, is just kind of drawing little vertical lines on the windows. And this is a pretty light pencil, so I'm not expecting it to be real heavy. But it'll, it'll be enough to kind of grime it up a little bit. Let's try this. Hopefully it'll be enough to grime it up a little bit. That's really not coming out that dark, is it? You can kind of see some scratches on the windows, but that's about it. Maybe kind of hard to see on the camera, but it's, it's looking pretty good. It's looking like a little subtle, very subtle uh, streaking effect. So I'm going to go ahead and pause here and finish that up on those two windows. And then we'll come back and uh, see how they look. You'll see the finished windows, or you see the finished buildings, rather. All right, see you soon. Bye. All right, brush monkeys, and there we go. There is the finished concrete building. With the graffiti and the OSL on the windows and all the weathering we did bullet holes battle damage and it's looking pretty good all right and here's the finished Mechanicus building with all its damage and weathering and little added bits we put on graffiti and whatnot so these both came out looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with them. So it's going to wrap up our series on weathering buildings and terrain. So thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next week. Bye. Hey Brush Monkeys, Tom from Flying Monkey Studios here. If you like what you see, click like down below. Um, if you want to be notified when new videos come out, click subscribe. Both of those help me with my YouTube numbers and help support me doing and what, what I do best. Um, speaking of which, uh, if you want to support me more directly, you can visit my Patreon site um, and go on my Instagram page to see uh, all the miniatures that I paint on this site and how to get your hands on one of your own if you want one. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. You can check both of those to see when new videos get posted. And visit my merch store at uh, storefrontier.com slash flymonkeystudios. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I will see you later. Bye.